Now, up next, our final award is the laureate of the John Dirks Canada Gairdner Global Health Award. And this year's laureate is Dr. Cesar Vitura. He's Emeritus Professor from the Federal University of Pelotas in southern Brazil. And he is awarded for his outstanding contributions to maternal and child health and nutrition in low and middle income countries with particular focus on the impact of exclusive breastfeeding on infant mortality and the long-term impact of early life nutrition. So I'm very happy, Cesar, that you're here, and I'd like to invite you to the stage. His music, the composer and singer is Vitor Ramil, and the song is Ramilonga. And Milonga is a traditional music style from the Pampas region in South America. This is an incredible honor. I'm sure I'll remember this evening forever. Uh, many thanks. Janet, Annalelia, John, Lauren, Summer, all of those who made this possible. And some of us have told you about the emotion of getting that phone call. And I haven't told you something, Janet. Uh, I'm over 60, I'm in my mid 60s, and you know that. <laughs> and when the phone rang, I was windsurfing. <laughs> I live in a beautiful lagoon in southern Brazil where the wind is often, you know, 20 to 30 knots. And when you're in the mid 60s and you windsurf, you get broken ankles and all sorts of things that, you know. <laughs> may impair your uh, function. But then I got an email, and then I phoned back and said, oh, that has to be good news because somebody from the Gardner Foundation wanted to talk to me. I called right back, and I got Janet. So thank you very much. I think um, I'm particularly happy that Gardner recognizes global health. Uh, I think uh, global health is a, a growing discipline and as the world becomes a smaller place. Uh, we live in a world where we still have about six billion deaths of children under five a year, most of which are preventable by off-the-shelf affordable technology, such as vaccines, such as antibiotics, and by education as well. We have about 300,000 deaths of women during a pregnancy or childbirth. And these are completely unacceptable. We have in Angola, for example, an infant mortality rate that is 150 per thousand. It's 30 times higher than Canada, 10 times higher than in Brazil. And we, uh, we at Global Health work uh, particularly uh, focusing on how to deliver these solutions that our colleagues from the basic sciences, our brilliant colleagues from the basic science, keep coming up with. How do we deliver those to the children and women who need them most? And by, to do that, we need a lot of epidemiology. We need a lot of understanding of uh, who are the hard to reach. Uh, it's easy to reach urban upper class populations anywhere in the world. They have low mortality rates, just like Canada. But if you really want to solve the, the major issue of, uh, of the unacceptably high number of deaths of children and women, you really have to move beyond that. You have to look at the poor, you have to look at the ethnic minorities, you have to look at the remote rural populations. Uh, this is what I do a lot of the time these days. And this came out of the studies that we did in Brazil. Now, for example, breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding is common in the world, it's common in poor countries, but exclusive breastfeeding is very rare. 
And that means the mother will feed the baby with nothing but breast milk for the first six months of life. She needs a lot of support for that, from health workers, from family, from government, from legislation. And that is a, a, a major challenge that I have spent quite a lot of time uh, dealing with. Now, now for the lighter side of the work. Uh, I'm lucky to live in Pelotas. Pelotas is incredibly remote. You know, it takes me four hours to get to the nearest domestic airport in Brazil, and then I catch a flight to Sao Paulo, and then I hop on the long-term flight. And so it's a 24 hours. It is a, a huge trip. Uh, and I've done that four times in the last two weeks <laughs> <laughs> because of this ankle. Uh, but uh, also, Pelotas is a very welcoming city. Uh, the population is, we have four birth cohorts. We start, uh, we started 1982 with a grant by Canadian IDRC. Thank you very much, Canada. Uh, we actually asked for $25,000 for the grant. And then somebody from IDRC came all the way down to Pelotas and said, no, that's too little. You need 50,000. <laughs> so they gave us this fortune for us. You know, we're just starting. My colleague Fernando Bajos and myself were just starting the cohort. And uh, we followed up all the births that took place in the city in that year. There were 5,914 births. And then every 11 years, we start a new birth cohort, and we follow up everybody. Uh, that we're still tracing 68% of the nearest 6,000 who were born in 1982. So they're now adults. Uh, they're, and we can look at the effect of what happened early in their life on their health, on their productivity, on their intelligence, on the next generation, and so on. So it's a pretty unique setting. If you think that Pelotas has 300,000 inhabitants, and we're following up uh, four birth cohorts totaling over 20,000 people, uh, we, have, we, we, we are really deeply involved with the whole population. And we even have a, 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 a joke that we say, well, the typical family in Pelotas is the mother, the father, two kids, and an interviewer. Because that's a, <laughs> our guy who's visiting them all the time. <laughs> um, I think, you know, I, I really, in addition to thanking uh, the Kerner Foundation, thanking, uh, thanking Canada for supporting, for believing in us at that very early period in which we were inexperienced uh, researchers. I'm happy to be standing right in front of my flag here, my national flag. And I'm someone who went to public school, who had not paid a cent for my education from first grade to the end of medical school, and then who got a grant to study epidemiology in the UK, also paid by the Brazilian tax player. So I'm really, really thankful to my country for allowing me to, to get to this stage. And I want to conclude by thanking my family. Maria Angela, my wife, my kids, Gabriel, Julia, and Isadora, and by telling a story about Julia. You know, if, you're, if you try to do global health and you live at the end of the world, you take a lot of time away from your family. And I'm really grateful for, them, for that. And I have one last story to tell you. Uh, Julia was about four year old, a uh, four year old, and uh, my wife was driving her to the bus station in Pelotas where I caught the bus that then I took me to the airport in Porto Alegre and then on and on and on. And the bus station is a very distinctive building. It looks like a pyramid. And when Julia got there, she said, hey, mom, daddy lives here. <laughs> Thank you.